What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Corset uh eighth edition i believe we'll see when we get in there uh this is actually a really fun one to open for me uh this was around the time that i started playing seventh edition was really my first set uh but it was really really fun to open up these sets back in the day and so it's always really exciting to go open them back up and now uh obviously not something we get to do very often as well so pretty fun uh this is a core set keep that in mind as we go through uh the power level of this set is not going to be on par uh, with some of the other sets that we have seen uh, in certain expansions. If I can get it open, here we go. I think we can get it. The glue on these older packs is insane. Woo, there we go. All right, so we are going to go through every card. We are going to try and figure out what our first round draft pick will be. Uh, and uh, as such, we're going to start with Suntail Hawk. So Suntail Hawk is a 1-1 one -one for one white, and it has flying. Very simple card. Very good card, in my opinion, for a 1-1 one, one, uh, for 1. It's actually really, really nice to have flyers on turn 1. Start pinging in that damage early. Not an amazing card by any means, of course. It is, you know, just a 1-drop. But uh, it's going to be able to get in for hopefully a few points of damage before it gets outpowered in the air later in the game. Uh, and so I actually don't mind this card. I don't think it's a first pick by any means, but I do think it's a pretty solid card. We'll see what we get through the rest of the pack, but I actually don't mind that. Uh, Balduvian Barbariers, Baldovian, that one, uh, it's a 3-2 for one and two red, vanilla creature, nothing too exciting here, this is a card that, uh, I believe was seen in some older sets as well, so really cool that they brought it back, uh, also this is ninth edition, not 8th edition, I'm doing great today guys, it's been a long day, but here we are uh so we do have a three two here it's not an amazing card by any means uh it does kind of fill that three drop uh curve uh which is kind of nice um but it's not great it's just going to be serviceable as a three drop i don't think it's better than the suntail hawk i don't necessarily think this is a bad card i think you would definitely play this in that three drop slot uh just because it is a solid three drop but it it doesn't have any like crazy text or anything like that again not that we're expecting it it is a core set but uh, I think I would take the Hawk over this. Uh, Boomerang is an instant for two blue. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Now, this is a really interesting card. I actually really like this one. Uh, so it's a great, great tempo play for multiple reasons. One, it's just an efficient card. It's instant speed. You're going to be able to do it whenever you need to. Uh, it is two blue, so a little bit tricky to cast. But I think most often you're going to be able to, to, you know, play to that if you need to. Uh, but what's really, really nice is this is target permanent. It could be a land. It could be an enchantment. It could be anything. Uh, and so this gives you a bit of a catch-off or uh, tempo play if you really, really need it. Uh, it's not amazing, obviously, because it is just a bounce effect, but that can do so, so much in a game of Magic. If you've never played a good, solid tempo deck, cards like this are exactly the kinds of things that you need. Uh, so I actually kind of like this uh, more than anything else we have. Normally I say go very aggressive, and I certainly think that is a good idea, uh, but I actually really like the, the tempo style decks a lot, uh, and this is a really, really good card in that deck. Uh, Overgrowth is an enchant land uh, for two and a green. Whenever the enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds two green to his or her mana pool. Uh, certainly great in a ramp style deck. Uh, I don't think it's an amazing card, though. I don't think it's obviously it's not the reason to go in the ramp. It's just the enabler. Uh, enablers are great, but I think I'd rather have the reason to go into that first. Uh, and so I don't think this is the pick here. It does certainly do a great job of ramping you, though. So if that's the kind of deck you find yourself in, certainly want to be picking these up as best you can. It's a solid three uh, three drop, excuse me. Uh, because we're in a core set, you also have a little bit more time to kind of build up your board. Uh, and so something like this, I don't think is a bad turn three play. Certainly, you generally want to be going more aggressive. Uh, really, really focus on that onboard threat. But... If you can pull off a really huge threat on turn five or turn six, I think that's more than worth the wait. So I uh, don't love it here, but I don't uh, hate this card for sure. I definitely would play it in that style deck. Uh, Foul Imp is a 2-2 flyer for two black. Uh, when it comes into play, you lose two life. So on the onset, this card seems quite bad. I will go ahead and say solely because you lose that two life. However, 2-2 uh, flyer for two is great value. Uh, in a core set like this, it's amazing. So I'm kind of in for this card over anything else we have here. This is a very black style card where it's like, you know, greatness at any cost, Bob, uh, where, you know, you lose a couple life, but you also get such a good value play that it's worth it. 
Uh, and this is that good value play early on being able to play a flyer uh, and then hopefully deal, you know, two, four, six points of damage off of just this one card that they may not be able to answer is amazing. So honestly, I think this is the pick so far. We'll see what we get, of course, but I actually really like this card. Ooh, a lot of ramp. Uh, Lanawar, El Lanawar Elves, excuse me, is a 1-1 one, one for one green. Very classically, tapping for one green itself, it essentially counts as a forest in your deck, uh, as well as a creature. And it's certainly a very, very good enabler for the ramp deck. Uh, and I do think this is worth taking over the overgrowth because it is a creature. Uh, it gives you a good solid turn one play, ramps you to turn three on turn one, which is great, uh, assuming you can hit your second land drop as well. I don't know if it's better than Falimp. Uh, I think what we would need to do is see what's in the rest of the pack, and based on that, we'll we'll kind of choose. Uh, but I actually really like both of these cards. It's a little bit difficult to choose right now when we don't have full information. Uh, Remove Soul is one in a blue for an instant, very simply counter-target creature spell. This is a very, very solid card in draft. Uh, you're going to be up against a lot of creatures. That's how most games in Limited are won. So a hard counter to a creature spell for only two mana, pretty on point. I'm super in for a card like this. I think potentially more so than any of these other cards. Again, we're, 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 going, we're going back and forth a little bit from tempo control style stuff to back to creatures. Now we're back to remove soul. Lots of really interesting stuff in this pack, but remove soul, very, very solid card. Gives you a very efficient way to just hard counter a creature. You do have to leave up that two mana, but two mana is not a ton when it comes to just killing off one of their biggest bombs. So I'm in for this, definitely love this card. Uh, Seething Song is two and a red for an instant. Very simply, add five red to your mana pool. Uh, a very, very powerful card. We've seen this played uh, in basically big mana decks where they're trying to like storm off or something like that. Uh, that doesn't happen in limited very often, not in this limited at the very least. Uh, and so I don't think this is as good a card here. Uh, certainly where you can really abuse it is where you want to play it. Uh, I don't think it's worth it here to pick it. Remove Soul is a very, very efficient way to kill something. This needs other cards to play with it to be good. It's not great generating five mana and doing nothing with it. So uh, I think on its own, Remove Soul being a much better card definitely makes it the pick here. Uh, Pacifism uh, is an enchant creature for one and a white. Uh, the enchanted creature can't attack or block. Um, this is actually very similar to Remove Soul in that it's essentially, it's not, it's a pseudo removal spell. Very, again, remove soul kind of being a pseudo removal spell. It definitely kills it though. So, uh, the difference here is remove soul just completely wipes the creature off. Uh, if, uh, if it hits the board, obviously pacifism is better. If it doesn't hit the board, remove soul is going to be the thing to take care of it. Uh, I like remove soul better, uh, if I'm honest, uh, solely because despite the fact that you have to leave up that mana, uh, this deals with creatures with abilities better than pacifism. Uh, pacifism is very very good at keeping those creatures at bay and not being able to swing in with them or block with them is great but if they have any kind of ability remove soul is going to be a much better card to play because then it obviously just gets rid of the creature entirely whereas pacifism it could still sit on the field and do whatever it needs to do so i definitely like remove soul over pacifism both are very very good though uh fear is an enchant creature as well for two black uh, the enchanted creature has fear, so it can't be blocked except by artifact creatures and or black creatures. Fear is a very old mechanic, very cool mechanic, in fact. But I don't love enchant creatures uh, like this, uh, where it's trying to power up one of your creatures. If they have a, a pacifism of their own, for instance, uh, fear becomes a very dead card. Uh, it's one of those situations you open yourself up for that two for one. If they've got anything to deal with the creature, this becomes so, so much worse. Certainly, it has a high ceiling. You're able to swing in, which is great. But sometimes that's not enough. If they've got a removal spell, this is 100% going to be the target. You get two for one value off of one card. So don't love it here. Uh, Lanawar Behemoth is a 4-4 four four for three and two green. Tap an untapped creature you control and it gets plus one plus one until the end of the turn. Uh, very powerful bomb uh, for sure. It's a 4-4 four four for five is not necessarily amazing, but I think in a core set it's fine. Uh, being able to tap uh, creatures to bump, pump it up, excuse me, is actually really, really nice because a lot of times what happens in these big green mana decks 
is you'll play your Lanoir Elves, you'll play your low ground creatures, you have a gap, and then you've got these really, really strong creatures. And so you'll play those, those ramp creatures, those elves, early on. They tend to get outpowered late game, but then you've also got nothing to play in your hand because it's green, you don't have a ton of card draw. Uh, and so you'll play out a big threat, and then it's you kind of don't have utility for those little creatures much anymore. So this gives you that utility on board. It, it allows you to pump them up right away, which is great. Uh, I don't know if it's better than Remove Soul. I think probably. Uh, Remove Soul is very powerful, but uh, most games are one on board, and so I'm going to have to go with the Behemoth here. It's going to hopefully steal a game just because it is so powerful. Uh, Peace of Mind is an enchantment for one and a white. You can pay a white, discard a card, and you gain three life. Uh, this isn't a very exciting card to me. Uh, it's great that it gains you some life. Discarding a card could be good for you, I guess. Uh, not really in this set so much. Uh, if you were reanimating, maybe, but I don't think that's going to happen here. Uh, and so, I, honestly, I kind of just think this card's bad. Uh, maybe against a mono red deck, you'll bring it in just so you can have a little bit of longevity. But other than that, I really don't see a utility for it. Uh, Urgolem's Eye is four of any color for an artifact. You tap it and very simply add two mana to your mana pool. It is generic mana, not colored. Uh, this is kind of good in a ramp deck. I think I would take the Behemoth over it, uh, but then if I wield this, which is very unlikely, uh, then I'd be very, very happy just because this ramps you into so many more big, dumb, green, awesome creatures. Uh, and so I actually really like a card like this, but I do think the Behemoth's better in a, in a limited environment uh, where you can't abuse the Golem's Eye quite as much as you would be able to in like a cube or something like that. Our land... And then our rare is Force of Nature. It is an 8-8 for 2 and 4 green, which is certainly a hefty cost, but uh, it does have Trample. Uh, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, Force of Nature deals 8 damage to you unless you pay for green. I think it's worth it. All right, so we have the Behemoth as a big dumb creature, but Force of Nature seems like a much better uh, big dumb creature. Certainly there's that added cost uh, on the upkeep, but I think it's worth it. Uh, you're going to be able to hopefully swing in and trample over some of the little dudes, which is exactly what you want to do. Uh, and so I think it's worth it to certainly keep that that uh, force of nature around. Eight damage to you is certainly bad, but uh, eight damage to the opponent, way worse. So that's going to be my pick. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Congratulations as well to our giveaway winner. I'm pre-recording this, so I don't know who it is, but thank you all for entering. We really do appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great holiday. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.